you say take a little bathroom? Yeah. Goodbye. Well, I want to make sure there's nothing. Any, that deal with you, sir? any comments that want to be said? I don't want to hold anybody back. We are. Uh, no, we're going to no, recess no, for lunch. Uh, lunch is being provided in the room here next door, okay. and it's supposed to be delivered at 12:15. So hopefully it was on time. And then we'll reconvene in here around 1:15, um, or very soon thereafter. Time to take a break. Thank you all very much. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you? Mayor and Commissioners, this is Mr. Michael Moore. You probably need to refer to this as something you see as Okay. Oh, welcome to the city of Dania Beach, Mr. J. Michael Moore. What does J stand for? James. Is that your first name? It is my first name. And Michael's your middle name? Middle name. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we've had an opportunity to review your resume. So we want you to take a few minutes to explain from your perspective how your background prepares you for this position. Madam Mayor, would you like me to turn this on or is, is it on already? We can okay. hear you. I wasn't sure I didn't see a light. <laughs> um, Madam Mayor, um, um, Mr. Vice Mayor, Commissioners, thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity, City Attorney. Um, thank you very much, City Clerk, I apologize. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak to you uh, regarding uh, your City Manager uh, vacancy. It's an honor, I must say, just to be shortlisted and given the opportunity to, uh, to meet with you. Um, I'll tell you briefly about my family first and then into my career because I think my family has a lot to do with understanding me and my work ethic. Um, I was born and raised here in South Florida, um, have never moved away. My entire life has been here in, uh, in South Florida. Um, my father was a, um, um, a metal fabricator, a welder uh, by trade who never finished high school and opened up his own business to, and it became very successful um, to the point where he was able to sell it. Um, when he retired. My mother um, worked for the state attorney's office and retired after 20 years. Um, never went to college, uh, but she was able to rise through their ranks and retire as administrator in their child support division. Um, growing up, work ethic, um, dedication, um, loyalty, those types of things were instilled on us as kids and, and, and our family. Um, I started my career in Miami-Dade County at the age of 19 as a laborer. Um, in our family, when you graduated high school, you either went away to college or you got a job and went to college. So my sisters and I chose the latter of, of going to college and, and getting jobs. Um, I started at 19 at Miami International Airport. Um, I worked there as a laborer and grew through the ranks um, to facilities uh, superintendent, ultimately managing their landscaping, um, their public works, and their solid waste um, divisions at the airport. I spent 12 years at Miami International Airport. Um, very familiar with um, airport operations, um, how those uh, benefit the surrounding areas, um, and what type of economic generators they can become um, if they're leveraged properly with, uh, with the businesses. Um, from there, I went to Public Works, uh, Road and Bridge. I was a superintendent there where I maintained the, the roadway infrastructure in Miami-Dade County, um, the stormwater and their right-of-way maintenance. Um, I spent several years there, and I was asked to go um, downtown and work um, to fill in for an executive assistant to the department director. Um, in that time period, I became very involved in their contracts. Um, I was asked to head up their contracts division, and um, over the next four or five years, I spent uh, that time redeveloping their contract process. Um, letting hundreds of millions of dollars worth of um, contracts, uh, infrastructure contracts for roadway construction, um, drainage, um, those types of things, lighting, um, signals, um, those types of things for the department. Um, in all of those scenarios I mentioned, um, I was asked to come in and work in different divisions. Um, I was asked because I, everybody that I worked with noticed my work ethic and my dedication. Um, I have a history of being asked to go to places to try to make them better. I don't want to say fix them, because not everything is broken, but to make them better. And I take pride in that. Um, from there, I went to the solid waste department, and I, I um, took on the role of assistant director in solid waste, where I manage the county's um, disposal operations, uh, their transfer operations, and code enforcement. Um, Miami-Dade County has a solid waste system 
So what that means is that most of the cities in Miami-Dade County have agreements with the city, I mean, with the county, rather, where all of their waste is disposed of at the county. Um, there is probably $90 million. When I was there, it was about $90 million in disposal revenue from just uh, from that side of the department. A lot of people don't realize there's a lot of money to be made in garbage. Um, there's always going to be garbage, and there's a, very few, there's a few number of people or a few number of businesses that can take it and, and, and deal with it. Broward County is going through something very similar now. Um, so from there, I, I spent 26 <coughs> years, almost 26 years, in Miami-Dade County. And I was given the opportunity to go to the city of Miramar. Um, it was a difficult decision because I was very close to 30 years um, in FRS with the county. But I have worked with um, um, a lady by the name of Kathleen Woods Richardson, who was the city manager in Miramar at the time. She had been my director in Miami-Dade County, and we had worked together off and on for more than 10 or 15 years in the county. And another gentleman by the name of Vernon Hargrave, who was the assistant city manager in Miramar. Those two individuals um, asked me to come to Miramar, in a large part, again, to help make things better. There was a transition. We had a new city manager. There was a new city manager, uh, Ms. Wood Richardson, and she wanted to build a team to help make, make things better in the city. I started as the chief operations officer, um, working for Mr. Hargrave as the assistant city manager. And um, uh, when he retired, that we went through a succession plan, where I became the assistant city manager, and he stayed on as the chief operations officer for a while. I had um, the parks department, public works and utilities, um, and capital construction and facilities management departments underneath me. Um, I currently have the parks department, uh, the police department, and, and office of marketing and public relations. There's been a shift um, in responsibilities in the city. So I've gotten to, I've, I have a very good, um, I've become exposed to almost all the departments within the city. Um, working in the manager's office, you work directly with all the departments anyway, but being actually responsible for almost all the departments in the city. Um, is that? Yes, our, a follow-up to that is um, you may or may not know the city of Dingy Beach is experiencing significant growth. And how has your previous experience prepared you to handle this transitioning environment? So I am aware, I, 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 I did start, well, Dan, everybody knows about Dania Point, so that, that's obvious. Um, but I must say that working in Miramar um, has exposed me the most about growth. That city doubled its population from the year 2000 to 2010, and it continues to grow. Um, we have a lot of projects, or a lot of uh, initiatives underway in the city, um, trying to continue that momentum. But one of the things that we've learned is that you have to diver diversify your tax base. It can't be all warehouses. It can't be all um, market rate uh, single family homes. Um, you have to diversify uh, across the board and make, your, make, make the city competitive to other cities around and to make sure you keep developers interested, you wanna keep your residents interested. Um, and so I've, I've spent a lot of time over the last several years in Miramar looking at that balance and trying to find that balance because it's very easy to have developers come in and um, you know, present projects, and of course they stimulate and growth, but we also need to make sure, in Miramar, we, we have a, a, and I think this happens everywhere, we have a, a severe shortage of affordable housing. Um, we, believe it or not, we have a shortage of, of um, entry-level jobs, um, um, unskilled uh, jobs or skilled labor, uh, most of our workforce is professional, and we have a lot of Fortune 5 companies, Fortune 500 companies in Myanmar. They look at that professional workforce that we have, and they, they like that. But we have a big shortage in everybody else who's not doesn't have a college degree, or they're or they're retired and they're trying to stay in their homes and and, and stay part of the city. So it's those balances that in, in Myanmar I think that would help me here in in Dania Beach. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Your, um, ma um, thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Um, in your management style, would you say you're more of a coach or more of a commander? I, you know, that depends, honestly. Uh, um, I think I'm more of a coach, but there are times when you have to be a commander. Um, I have, 
I am very results oriented. Good results, bad results, we have to have results. Um, and I have high expectations. Um, I, 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 I get to work at seven in the morning and I may leave at nine or 10 at night. Doesn't mean that everybody has to do that. I was a, I, I mean, I was a, one of the things I left out, I was a union steward for seven years when I was at, the, when I was at Miami International Airport. I am very much um, compassionate and in tune with our labor force, with our rank and file. Um, but I expect us to work. I, I expect the, the city's not, I have a philosophy, the city of Miramar is not there to serve me. I am there to serve the city. And I expect everybody that I work with to have that same philosophy. We were, we're public servants. We're not, uh, I didn't, uh, nobody gets a government job to become rich. I mean, you have to truly do it because you love it. You're passionate about it. You want to hear that nobody's calling and, and offering bouquets of flowers and, and, and free things. They're calling the city because they have, you know, an issue. They have concerns. And it's our job to make sure we don't forget about that. There's a lot about, you know, uh, we talk a lot about development and, and, um, and, and growth in our city. But we also have to make sure we stay in touch with the, with the residents, the people that have been there, and, and, and bridge that. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes uh, it just depends on the situation or the individuals. I can tell you that the conversations I would have with our landscapers in the field are not the same conversations I may, ha I may have with the city attorney. Um, it's just you, you have to relate, and we have to all be on one accord. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, any follow-ups for that? Just just say, uh, with all those people that you say you don't have those jobs available for, well, Dania Point's going to be needing a lot of workers, and I don't know where they're coming from, so maybe Miramar will be, we'll have to get a mass transit from Miramar. Connectivity is huge, and I truly, I tru truly believe that, and, and, and thank you, Commissioner, because I think it, it's important for, you know, sister cities and to work together, you know, our, our neighbors to work together, because that's a, that's a perfect example. We don't have, in, in Miramar, we don't have a lot of space left. We don't have a lot of land. So it's important to work with Hollywood, Miami Gardens, uh, you know, Pembroke Pines, all of our, all of our um, sister cities, you know, together to see how we can help each other. Um, our mayor, and I think the other thing too is the elected body um, sends the best signal. I mean, you are the, the, the most vocal and the most visible advocates uh, of the city. Um, and Miramar, um, and all of our elected officials are great, but we have a wonderful mayor. And he champions that city more than any, but I think he dreams at night about championing the city because <laughs> I get does. more phone calls um, from people that have heard him speak or have met him at an airport or, and they're, they're just interested. They want to come to the city and do business. Before Miramar, I never realized how important that nexus is, how really important that is. And, and it's, it is, it's truly, it's truly valuable. Vice Mayor. Uh, Follow-up question to your management style, Wood. Um, is your um, relationship with the city commission, uh, how do you see that in the future? Uh, how, uh, how, how do you figure your relationship with the city commissioners relates to your day-to-day -day operations? Um, I think I have an excellent relationship with everybody on the commission, everybody. Do we always agree? Not necessarily, but that's not my job. I, my job is to present facts to the commission, um, recommendations, and to execute their vision. That's, 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 that's what I see our role. But I have an excellent relationship with all of them. I can tell you that, that there's been a, a major shift in the city's uh, structure, management structure, in the last month and a half. And all of the other individuals that were in the manager's office are no longer there, but I'm still there. Um, I think that speaks clearly about my work ethic um, and my dedication, um, my passion for, for what we do. Um, I'm not a politician. I don't pretend to be a politician. I don't like politics, no offense. Um, but I try to be astute to what's happening. Um, I think the greatest, the, the greatest satisfaction or even our, our responsibility of a city manager is to get all five of you to vote yes on an item. That sends huge message to the community. Um, and, it, and, it's, it, and it says that your staff is doing a great job of informing you doesn't mean that all of you may agree on the item, but I think it's very important that we educate you and inform you about everything that comes in front of you. Um, we spend a lot of time in Miramar sitting, doing one-on-ones before every commission meeting and reviewing it with the commission. We want to make sure any of them have any questions, any concerns, um, that we try to answer those. And 
not necessarily to change what we're presenting, but to listen, you know, listen to th their viewpoints and incorporate that somehow if possible. Um, it's, it, again, it, it sends a, a, a really huge message, and I've watched a couple of your meetings. Oh, um, I know that, I know that, um, you know, you, 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 ch you, you cherish that, you, you really emphasize that a lot, working together. I've seen that. Um, um, Commissioner Grace, I, I'm sorry she's not here, and I hope um, she's okay, but I see all of you work, trying to work together, and, and that's, that's big. That's, that, that, that's really important. Thank you. Commissioner Brandon Marty. I'm very taken by you. Were you running that city, or was there somebody else running it? N no, ma'am. I, I don't believe in doing anything by myself. I, I believe in teams. You do. You know, great, great ideas can come from an individual, but they're never they're executed by a team. Nobody. I've been a part of phenomenal ideas, career changing ideas, and and it wasn't my, they weren't a lot of times ninety percent of the times they weren't even my ideas. They were ideas that I got from sitting down and listening with staff, just listening. My father used to always say, "God gave you two ears and one mouth, make them proud," and and you get a lot from that. Mayor Mar. Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, I'm asking her. <laughs> uh, you seem like to me as a really take charge person, um, especially reading your resume over here, like uh, when it said you recommended at times to a city manager to delete or modify, uh, mod uh, modify. modify a program or project. I'm dying to hear an example of that. I'll give you a great example. Good. When I was in Miami-Dade County, um, in Solid Waste, was a, as the assistant director there, we, we, one of the responsibilities was a transfer division um, that we had. We moved, so basically, all of the cities, um, um, the, the haulers, would bring their waste to, to, to local facilities, transferred, uh, transfer facilities. We would then put that waste on tractor trailers and take it to the resource recovery facility in Doral, if not uh, the South Dade landfill. Um, that all happened during the day, Monday, th Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., um, 4.30 p.m. Everybody that lives here and is, uh, knows traffic, the, the, traffic's, the traffic's a big issue. So we did a Six Sigma study, and when we looked at what, what ways that we could be more efficient, um, and it may be common sense to all of us as we're talking about it now, but it wasn't, it wasn't to, the, to the county or to the department. But we looked at creating a night shift. And we said, you know what, what about if we move this waste at night? We started, we, you know, what about if we start a night shift? We could avoid all, avoid all these rush hour, um, rush hour um, gridlock around the county. Um, being, a very, being very close to the unions even then, um, and I, I, I try to I try to maintain those relationships because you never know how much they're how, how important they can be later on. We brought the first thing we did before we before we started uh, talking about it outside the room is we brought in the union. We wanted to know how how on board they would be with discussing it. Oh, they weren't. They they didn't want to have anything to do with this. You know, they didn't want their their members working at night. So we, we, we didn't give up. We said, okay, well, what would make a difference? Well, money always makes a difference in, 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 you know, to employees. So we looked at creating a night differential for those employees. And then we said, you know what? What about if we only make this new night shift apply to the new hires? So having several hundred, um, uh, well, there was probably 127 transfer drivers at the time. There's a lot of turnover in those jobs. Uh, retirements, uh, promotions to transit. Uh, Miami-Dade County has a huge transit department. So we said, what about if we just make this apply to the, to the, um, the new employees, the new hires? That way we're not affecting any of the, the veteran employees, anybody with tenure. They were like, absolutely, let's try it. Let's do a pilot. So we did a pilot. We saved 45%. We became 45% uh, percent more efficient by creating a night shift. Not only did we um, work with the union, but we came to a point where all the veteran employees wanted the night shift. So none of the new employees were able to go to the night shift. They all had to go to the day shift and start. So it, it became a huge success. It was very difficult to sell that to management. Very difficult. And um, I'm not saying that they were opposed. It was just new. It was something that they hadn't considered. It, it was out of the norm. And, and I think you have to do that. Uh, there's no such thing as a bad idea. And if I tell you that employees, what I found out later, 
employees for years had been suggesting that they do a night shift. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. So it's, it's very important to stay in touch with the very people who are doing the work or other people in other areas that are doing something similar. So that's an example of, of, of something that, of making recommendations to management. So I had a team of people that I worked with to put it together, but I had to sell it. And it wasn't easy, Commissioner. Okay, may I? Because okay. since you, well, you helped the union, first of all, by opening up a new position, whether it was temporary or permanent, and with a pay differential. That I applaud you for. But then on, um, on your page here, it says you were, now that made the union happy, all right? Let's mm -hmm. get that clear. Then they, over here it says you reduced full-time employee count by 30% as a result of streamlining operations. Now that seems to now go in the opposite way. Correct. Explain. Because they're, not every situation is the same. Um, and I, can, I, I do want to qualify that whenever we come up with an initiative, one of, the, one of the things that we never lose touch of is if we are going to impact employees, mm -hmm. how we can funnel those employees into, into different positions or different areas. We mm -hmm. never want employees to be out on the street. One of the most difficult things as a manager is to affect somebody's livelihood, whether that be because of performance issues or whether that be because of city efficiencies. So depending on what that, depending on those circumstances, sometimes it's better to privatize. Sometimes it's better to streamline operations. Uh, Technology is a huge example of that. Um, you know, the, 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 as, as people are more and more able to come in and do things online and do things on the, you know, do things over the internet, that's, that, that affects people. Um, I'll give you a recent example. In the city of Miramar, we, we have a, a waste hauling contract with a firm by the name of WastePro. Um, the city managed the billing for the commercial properties and that we have a franchise agreement and the city was responsible for collecting the, the, the fees on commercial hauling in the city. Um, not all the cities don't do the best at some things um, and billing is one of the things that a lot of private companies do very well because they're good at collecting their money. And so we recognize, we, we actually had a discussion one time about how we needed, because of our utility building, billing, how we needed more people, more FTEs to try to address our utility building because we had a shortage. And an hour later, we had a discussion about waste billing and the issues, the, 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 the difficulties we were having in collecting money from commercial businesses. Well, between those two meetings, there was a rea the, uh, it became apparent that if we privatized, the, the, if we allowed WastePro to take over the, the billing of the commercial customers, we could actually take those individuals that were assigned to that task and reassign them now to, to utility billing on the water side. So that's an example of where we reduced FTEs for a program, but we actually put them over into a program that they were going to come to the, before the commission and ask for anyway. I hope that... Yeah, it did, but Mr. Moore, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit confused here. When you cross-trained employees was there ever a pay differential given anytime so anytime an employee works above and beyond their job description yes the way the CBAs most CBAs and all the ones that I'm familiar with they have what's called an out-of-class pay right uh, that always is recognized always. okay and we encourage that don't uh, it's part of it's part of investing in our employees it's part of you know showing loyalty to them um, and you, I know the city has a smaller workforce, but even in small workforces, it's important to invest. You know, we have that, there's that, there's that saying that if you don't, you know, you, you don't send your employees to training because you're afraid that they may, mm -hmm. you know, get hired by somebody else. Well, what happens if you don't train them and they stay? You know, that's the other part of that. I mean, you're, you, you have to invest in your, your, the greatest resource that any organization has is their employees. The greatest. It's not the fancy cars or their technology, it's their employees. I mean, first, uh, when I walk through the door and I, I, somebody greets me from the city, that's first impressions. That means everything. Uh, you, we have to invest in, uh, no matter where you are, you invest in your employees. I have a follow-up question for her question. Um, uh, uh, your turn. Uh, okay. 
Okay. Um, I have a follow-up question. Did any of those employees that you cross-trained or sent over to the um, utilities department, did they have to take a pay cut? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. Uh, Vice Mayor, then we're going to let Commissioner Savina, who hasn't said anything yet. I know these are still follow-up questions for her. That's okay. I'm okay. Is it a follow-up question, Vice Mayor? Yes. Yeah. About cross-training. So it is uh, conceivable that if there is an extra person, say in community development, they could be cross-trained to help out in finance department, you know, d especially during the summer, during vacation times and such like that. So they would get a differential for leaving one department and going to another as long as any they're able to perform the, the duties? Sorry, Vice Mayor. That's okay. Yeah, any time, and, and again, I'd have to be familiar with the, the city CBA just to make sure, but any time, and this is a belief, let me tell you, a personal belief, any time you ask an employee to do above and beyond what their current job description is, I think they should be entitled to some type of incentive pay, some type of out-of-class pay. Now, I have struggled with the other part where asking employees to do less than what's required of them, um, that's some, there's a lot of employees that don't like to do that. But I come from a time where, you know, if I would, and, and I do this now, I, I, if I walk into City Hall and I see litter, I, I, I pick it up. I don't pick up the phone and call somebody to go pick up litter. I'm, so I struggle with employees that feel like they can only do what's in their job description. I, I worked, you know, I worked from the bottom up. So I appreciate everything that goes into it. Um, I, I take, I'm very passionate about making sure our employees are, are represented uh, correctly. I, um, I, I think it's, again, our employees are our greatest resource. I, I've seen a lot of good ideas, a lot of good initiatives that had the employees bought into it would have been successful and they weren't. So you have to have employee buy-in. You can have some great initiatives, but and if the employee is not willing to push the key or, you know, uh, execute it, it won't work. It just won't work. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Savino. What? <laughs> oh, are, are you in here with us? <laughs> oh, you want me to ask a new question? Okay. Well, since you guys took so long, I'm asking number three. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, number three. All right, well, this is a six-part question. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'll ask them to you one at a time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, anyhow, please describe your experience with the following areas, economic development and redevelopment. Okay, as I spoke earlier, uh, a lot of my experience, and, and I'm not here to pretend that I'm yeah. an expert on economic you can, development. You can short, uh, since okay. you did speak on something, you can make them short uh, explanations. Um, Miramar, my time in Miramar has really exposed me a, a lot to the, the development and redevelopment side um, of the city. Um, we have a transit-oriented corridor on the 441 on the east side of the city. Um, it's within our historic Miramar area. It's one of the er it's an area where you walk into and you feel like you can leave a legacy if if you can get that spark uh, to change. So we've done a lot there. We, we and we constantly change. We're you know we're constantly talking to developers uh, and residents of the area to see what we need to do different to try to you know to try to keep that stimulus going. So okay, sorry. that's fair enough. Uh, budgeting and financial management. So I've worked for enterprise funds, so um, departments, and I'm sure everybody knows, sorry. So I've worked for enterprise funds and general funds. Um, in general fund, public works, for example, everything comes from ad valorem, for the most part. There's divisions with inside that storm water and those types of things, but whenever you work for a general fund department, you learn the budget, because every dollar counts. And I've when, when I say learn the budget, we run spread, I, I, I've run spreadsheets line by line, and I, it, it makes my, I know it makes my directors um, uh, frustrated even to this day because we're, we're going through the budget now. We just had a budget workshop. But I sit with every director, and I go over every line in that budget. One of the things you'll see in my resume is about credit cards, credit card fees, user fees. That came out of a budget meeting. That came out of us huddling together and going down every line item um, and, and asking questions. Um, something that's so, and it could be debatable whether it's appropriate or not, but why should the city pay for the processing, you know, transactions of credit cards? You know, let's pass that back on to the, the customers. Funny. So we did a whole campaign and we educated the public, you know, and, and, and our customers. We didn't want to just dump it on them. But 
I, I'm very detail oriented when it comes to the budget, and I and, and I believe that and we run projections. Uh, we do monthly projections. I want to know where you're at, the time, you know, percent of the year gone by, with how much you've spent. Uh, we do a lot with the budget. Um, financial management also. Uh, you know, it, it's all about communication and it's all about building that team that shares, you know, your same passion and your, and your same vision. The money that comes out of that city, I treat it as my money. I don't, if I think, if I have a, if I have a feeling that some, we're paying too much for something or we're overspending, we scrutinize it. I, I don't look at it as city money. If, if we lose a dollar or if we overpay something, that hurts me. I, I, I take that very seriously. Um, when I go and speak in, in, in t at community meetings and I'm, and I'm talking to residents, I'm, I'm talking about their money. I'm not talking about my money, and I, I want to make sure that we're great stewards with that money. You, uh, you've hit, you hit on the next one, which was strategic planning and vision there pretty much already in that last statement, so I'll skip that one. Um, and capital improvements we talked a little bit about as well. How about uh, coastal management? So, uh, so your beaches. Your, your, your beach is, is a huge, I mean, that's probably the most significant um, um, uh, attraction or a draw um, asset that you, that you have in the city. Um, have I managed a beach? No. But I've worked very closely with the Miami-Dade County Parks Department on Crandon Beach. And I say very closely because when I was in the parks, when I was in the Public Works Department, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of pilot programs, um, uh, initiatives where they could maintain the beaches better. They realized that uh, you know having a uh, having a world class beach, uh, having a clean beach, having uh, you know very the most basic things you know the amenities there, um, ease of access connectivity, uh, and that's huge. Those types of things, um, we worked in conjunction with the Parks Department. Um, it's a challenge, I mean, especially with you. I, I watched one of your, um, one of your last meetings and uh, there was a big discussion about the erosion. And, and I, I, the state of the city, I listened to your, 70% your, of your dunes that you, that you lost. Um, I'm gonna admit that I was out there this weekend um, and I walked around. Um, I'm not gonna share anything about uh, my experience because I'm very anal. I, I mean, if something's crooked on the wall, that, that, that bothers me. So um, oh, that I'm is a, sure you have a long list. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> We're I, missing like a I promised my wife portal. I would not say anything. Yeah, no. I promised my wife I would not say anything. But um, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It just, uh, you know, a lot of that comes from uh, um, passion, uh, you know, ownership. Um, making sure that everybody realizes um, how important it is. I probably met six different people from the time I paid to the time I got to the pier that were no, there were tourists. I mean, there were, I didn't, I didn't meet any locals. You know what I mean? They were all tourists. Super nice. So, you know, but there's a real issue there and we have to make sure we stay vigilant. Um, there's a lot of different agencies involved with beaches um, that I remember from the county. Um, you just can't go out there and do what you want to do. Even from a very simplistic person like myself that thinks, you know what, let's fix it right now. Um, you can't, there's a, lot, there's a lot of steps. You know, there's a, turtles is a good example. You know what I mean? You, uh, and I don't know if you have any on your beach, but I remember yeah. from Crandon. So there's a lot of things that you have to go through and, and, and staff needs to make sure that they're aware of all those regulations and stuff. But you can't lose your beaches. You can't lose your beach. You, you know, that's, that, and there's so much more that could be done there, you know. Um, I hope, yes, sir. Did you want to add anything off that? Yes, list? affordable housing. Okay. Did you speak on affordable housing already? Um, you said that you guys have a problem with having affordable Absolutely. housing. Um, How can you correct that? So correct my, that? My, my question would be uh, about gentrification. Mm -hmm. How would you go about uh, knowing that you have a problem with affordable, affordable housing there? We kind of have a problem here with affordable housing as well. How would you help prevent gentrification in this neighborhood, in this city? So... Um, let me first say that um, my grandparents, um, their house sits on Southwest 100th Street and US 1 and South 8. It's a wooden house. Um, it's more than 100 years old. It's in Pinecrest now. Um, it's surrounded by multi-million dollar homes, multi-million dollar homes. It's on two and a half acres, one acre, and that one of those acres recently sold for $8 million, uh, you know, $9 million dollars when developers came to my, my father and my uncle, they offered him $400,000 for that property. They thought it was great. I mean, they had grown up there. It's, it's a problem everywhere. 
What, mm -hmm. what your, what your gentrification is a problem everywhere. There has to be community involvement. There has to be. We can't, um, we can't move forward with development without somehow trying to keep the, um, those unique uh, um, characteristics of, of the neighborhoods um, there without trying to incorporate somehow affordable housing, affordable housing. Um, there's a lot of different programs, and it doesn't speak directly to um, preventing it, but I can tell you in Miramar, if you have owned your house for more than 25 years, we don't, we don't, um, we don't require you to pay any city property tax. You're exempt from city property tax. That's a way to try to help those long-term residents that have been in the same home, you know, the, the same property, um, you know, to try to stabilize them. We offer a lot of programs to try to help um, uh, um, rehab their homes, um, beautification, um, utility connections. We're, we're taking everybody off of uh, um, septic tanks, especially in historic Miramar. We're putting in sewer lines, um, and we're doing all, and then we're giving grants um, or low interest loans um, um, forgivable to those individuals that want to connect or have to connect now to the to the sewer system. So simply community involvement. And we have to listen, not just have meetings and, and, and for the sake of having meetings. We have to listen to the, we have to listen to those individuals in the community. Um, developers are aware of this. They're, 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 it's not something that, uh, a gen development that is genuine to the city, this is important to them. If they truly, if it's truly a benefit to the city and they truly are genuine to, to working with the city, this is something that's important to them. Um, there's got to be affordable housing. There's got to be jobs that those individuals that live in our city that can somehow earn the money that they need to stay in the city and to do the things. Um, and a big thing is transportation, connectivity. I'll say that in, whether it was in Dade County or whether it was in Miramar, connecting all those points of interest um, is, is, is huge. Uh, we partner with Broward. They provide um, shuttles to the city. We operate them, but they provide shuttles, and we have four routes in the city separate from the county's uh, um, transit system, but we have four routes in the city. Um, and, and we use those to, you know, for those areas to try to get people to the, to the, to the major hubs, to the, you know, to the city center, to those types of things. Um, you have in this city, you have, um, you know, you have the, the FEC that comes through the city, so you have Brightline, right, and you have Tri-Rail. One of the big discussions that's happening across um, you know, South Florida is, or in the, locally here, is the coastal link, the future coastal link. That's huge. I mean, you have, you know, I, I joke because we had a meeting with the, um, some individuals that are working on the, co some consultants that are working on the coastal link, and we didn't know they were doing it. We were meeting about something else. And so as soon as we found out, we were, how does Miramar get access to that? And they were like, are you crazy? You're way, why would you want access? Connectivity, it's, it's huge. Um, um, shared workspace, uh, we work, um, um, those types of things, that's, that's big to any city. Um, creating, that, creating those dynamics where we can allow um, small businesses um, to not have, not to, have to uh, uh, um, have brick and mortar type um, uh, facilities. Sorry. No. Because I'll, keep, <laughs> I'll no. keep going and going. I'm, no. no way. Are you finished? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm here. Uh, okay. Um, you can take the next question. Go ahead. A lot of things that I'm frustrated with coming from the private sector is the length of time it takes to get things done. Mm -hmm. And this goes with question number 12. Um, your approach to ethics in the workplace and how to move the process forward, you know, trying to maintain your ethics, our ethics, and legalities involved in doing government and how to best um, get things to happen faster. Can you talk about that? Um, absolutely, and that's probably one of the worst things that anybody that works with me knows that they can say is that's the way we've always done it. Um, I hate that that paradigm. It's unspeakable. I don't. I don't want to hear that. Um, and it goes to building the team, a team. Everybody has to have a desire to do things better than they did yesterday. Um, um, the most the most common thing that I see is well, our code says this. Um, or the regulations say that. Well, codes and regulations were, were put together, if they're local, by you as a board. You, you authorize them. 
let's change them. Uh, I'll give you an ex a quick example. We are looking at using containers, shipping containers, um, in one of our parks, in our, in our Miramar Regional Park, as for concessionaires. We're trying, to, we're trying to push the envelope and do things different, trying to encourage small businesses in the city, give them the resources, um, the, the, the um, availability of, of doing their businesses at our events. Well, our code says you can't have them. So I was sitting in your parking garage just now going back and forth with our, our community economic um, development department because they're telling me, well, it's got to go to planning and zoning and then it's got to go to commission and we have to do all these things. Okay, but it doesn't have to be that way. It has to be that way now. But let's learn from this. What can we change to fast track these things? What can we do differently? Because there has to be momentum in everything that we do. It, we, that's, that's one of the biggest frustrations I think residents and businesses see from a city or even from you know government in general we talk about something and then it takes two years for us to implement mm -hmm. that's not acceptable that, that, that doesn't work it doesn't work in the private sector and granted I've never well before I started when I was a teenager I worked in a fish market but I've never had a private sector job um, but I, I, I feel that way I, I, results we have to have results we have to always be looking at what we do, the processes and the procedures, and, and how they can be more efficient. Um, and a lot of that comes with my experience um, in the general fund departments. Because when you work in those departments, again, there's always competition from the private sector. There's always some you know, salesperson or some consultant that says, is coming to the commission, or coming to the, the county manager or the, the city manager saying, you know, we can do it cheaper. Landscaping is a great example. We can do landscaping cheaper. Let us do landscaping. Um, and it's not always the case. It's not always the case. And a lot of times what you'll see is the private sector will come in, yeah, they'll come in a lot cheaper, but four or five years down the road when you don't have the resources anymore, you've sold all your lawnmowers or you've gotten, you, you reallocated those people to parks or those other places, now they start raising their prices. Waste, solid waste is another great example of that because there's so few people that, that manage it. Um, it's a trap, so you have to look at that. and. The key to combat that is to make change quickly. The same way the private sector implements initiatives and pilot programs, the city has to do that. Is you, I, I read about you created a special unit just to handle your big projects You're in the building department. That's, that's a perf to me, that's a perfect example of what, how you have to adapt. Because if not, that you'll lose them. No matter how great the property is or no matter how great you know, the idea is, you'll lose them to, to somebody else. Can, yes. Any follow-ups for that question? Commissioner Brandon Marty, are you? No. No, no it's your turn. What's the most important thing to you when working with a city commission? Transparency. Communication. That communicating and, and being transparent. Um, one of the huge benefits, and... Uh, and I pride myself with getting out. Uh, I, I keep a whole wardrobe behind my door in my office. But most of the times you're going to see me in a pair of slacks and, and, and either a pullover or, or, or a button-up shirt, but not in a coat and tie, not in a, and not in a suit. Um, and you'll never see me walking around with my name you know, in the title. That's just not who I am, not about the fame and the glory. I'm about connection, con connecting with the community. So a lot of times when we talk to our electeds about an issue, Yes, you spend a lot of time out in the community too, but I would challenge you that your that staff, city staff, spends an equal, if not more time with those same individuals or similar. So we, it's important for us to share what we, the pulse that we feel from the community um, or the business community, the, you know, the residents, um, on everything that comes before you. Um, I've, I've, seen, I've seen things come before the commission where the commission could have been better informed and um, there be pushback from certain areas of the city. And a lot of it, and it goes both ways. This, we staff could have, been, could have informed that area, that community uh, better, and we could have been more transparent um, in sharing information with the elected officials. So transparency and communication to me is everything. We really stress, we have, every, before every agenda, we have agenda review meetings, and we talk about, is this an item that we're going to walk the floor? Walk the floor meaning we're going to have one-on-ones with the elected officials. We're going to walk the floor, or is it just something simple that we're, we're, maybe we're renewing a janitorial service or something? We have those discussions, though. 
Because even janitorial services, believe it or not, could, have, could be a discussion because there could be two or three local businesses that want to participate and they're not. So we want to make sure we share that with you, that, that you're aware of, that, of those things. But communication, Commissioner, that's, that's the most important thing. I have a follow-up with that. How is the relationship between you, you and your CRA um, more exactly? Do you all know everything that's going on within your CRA, or do you just, <clears throat> excuse me, or do you all just treat it as a total separate entity? So the city of Miramar doesn't have a CRA? Oh, you don't? At all, no. And, and I've only been there for, for four years now. But again, uh, the, the, the assistant city manager and now city manager that, that hired me uh, to come on with him, Vernon Hargrave, um, he, he talks to me about this. And there was a time where the elected of that city didn't want the, the stigma of blight, you know, that, that, th those labels in the city. Mm -hmm. So they missed that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's something that, you know, we kick ourselves now. We wish we could go back there and, you know, back in time and redo it, but we don't have a CRA. Oh, how, okay, don't. so walking into this situation where you will have a CRA, um, how do you think that relationship would be or should be? Well, it has to be very strong and, and, and open uh, uh, with communication. First of all, although the CRA is separate, your, your city staff is going to execute everything from the, from the CRA that you approve. <laughs> you approve through the CRA. So that has to be, uh, there, there has to be a great working relationship there has to be because it goes back to the analogy that I told you if you can have great ideas but if if one arm isn't working properly it's not gonna you know yeah. you're not gonna get the results that you need um, and, it, and it also goes back to the communication I was telling you about y yes a CRA should be in touch with um, you know with the with the businesses and the residents within that zone but the same way I talk about being transparent with you and communicating with you we have to do that with a CRA also sometimes CRAs and I don't know this from experience, but it's from what I hear from other, um, other cities or, uh, you know, uh, other individuals. C and it, this, this can happen actually anywhere, but in, in anything. But it's very easy to get focused on, on, on one, one area, one section. Um, CRAs have, are, are, are very challenged in not forgetting the entire CRA area. And, and that's, some, that, that's not easy. I, you know, that's, that's not easy for um, CRAs, CRA directors to do. In, in the city of Miami, um, you know, talking with them over the years, they get, you know, you get excited and you get focused on working on one particular area, but then you forget, not, for, not on purpose, but, you know, there's a whole other area within the CRA that needs attention too. Sure. So a lot of that is communication. You, you can accomplish so much by just going to speak to people and letting them know where you are. They may, they may not, not always agree with you, but it's definitely better than not saying anything at all and being absent. Okay. Commissioner Brennan? Yeah. Well, this same commission is also the CRA board. Okay. Okay, so okay. that, that uh, I, I wanted you to know. And also, uh, to what you just said, now, the CRA area takes care of the CRA, all right? But the other percentage, like you say, the big picture's not involved and things that are done uh, in the CRA, like some OASIS projects, that people on the other side that we're not looking at who have most of the money and that are floating it, floating the projects, are overlooked, and then that's where the division comes in. So I like very much what you said about you got to look at a whole picture. Right. There's not just the CRA. There's a city. There's a whole city, and the communication lines have to be open with the city commission because it's not just that percentage that's, um, that's got the investment in the city. It's the entire city as a whole. And I personally like it when a CRA works close with our, our management here. Can I come just real quick? Yes. Yeah. And we in Miramar, we have, although we don't have a CRA, but we have uh, a similar situation where the west part of Miramar um, is, is new, relatively new, the last sure. 10, 12 years, yeah. um, as opposed to the historic side. I've sat in more meetings than I'll ever remember because, about the difference between east and west, where the historic side of the city feels like the west side gets everything. But the reality of it is it's not true. 
the west side of the city actually, uh, because they're they're more affluent yeah. and they have more they're more, more um, bigger tax base. Yes, they do provide, but we're spending fifty five million dollars in infrastructure improvements in the historic side of our city. One of the things that we spend more time in doing is reminding our elected officials outside of our mayor because he he champions it more than we do up to, to about that. Because if, you, if you're not in front of those smaller communities, not everybody is on the website, you know, not everybody mm -hmm. gets blast or has social media. I don't, I don't care for social media. That's, I'm, I'm one of those. I don't have time, I wish, but I, I don't even have time for that. But um, not everybody gets that, so you have to go speak to them. And you have to keep drilling it in. Over the last two years, um, we probably have one or two people that come to the commissions now and, and, and complain about the historic side not getting you know, tax dollars or, or city improvements as opposed to the west side. The other thing is what a lot of them don't realize is all of those nice medians and all that landscaping, that's all paid for by the HOAs. It's not the city that does that, at least in Miramar. So they, they drive to the west side and they see you know, how beautiful everything is, but I, I can tell you we have one development alone that they spend more than a million dollars a year in landscaping. A million dollars. The residents, if they're not informed, they don't know that. And they think the city is doing all that. So it, communication is key. Um, but we also, like I said, we're spending $55 million in infrastructure projects. And we're spending $26 million re, um, uh, taking our lime softening water plant on the east side to a nanofiltration. Um, uh, um, um, process. We have to we, we, we have to communicate that with residents. They got to know that. They got to know that because if not, they just think it's business as usual, and they just they they see everything on the west side, you know, much prettier. Sorry. Vice Mayor, you have a follow up. Yes, as, as uh, from what you said about getting the word out, would you be in favor of any city sponsored programs, depending on the budget, where we could provide educational services for technology for let's say for seniors and. Uh, uh, underprivileged minorities that might be able to come and uh, take advantage of the programs that we offer and the out the indicator would be the outcome for more people being involved and being able to have access to the information to answer their questions would you be in favor of that absolutely okay. and no matter how much I tell you there's people that don't do it it's vital to the future I'm, I'm at a, I'm at an age and a point where I used to think I knew everything about a cell phone and how it operated mm -hmm. I have a 12 year old daughter who thinks she's 20, but if I have an issue with my cell phone, I hand it to my daughter, and she, she figures it out. Um, we have to do that. In Miramar, we do that. We have a multi-service center. We actually um, developed a partnership with Memorial Hospital um, and another entity, I, uh, the name, uh, I can't remember the name, but they provided computers to the city. We put them in our multi-service center, and they're open to the public. Uh, now, our multi-service center also acts as our, our, our senior facility, so we run all of our senior programs out of there. So they provide classes to seniors, any of the kids, any of the kids with, within the city and the neighborhoods. And we went further. In every, so in Miramar, we have 42 parks, 42 parks in that city. Um, we love parks. We don't want any more parks, but we love parks, 42. And all of the parks that we have facilities, Sunset Lakes, YEC, and all of those places where we have facilities, we set up computer banks. Granted, it may only be four or five computers, but the idea was the same, to provide uh, a point where residents, um, anybody could come in and use those, use those computers. And then we, partnership, we partnered um, with different agencies to provide training. Uh, United Way is a, is a great partner with the city of Miramar. Um, they do a lot of stuff, and we're really exploring that, the, the, that relationship more and more right now. Um, we even, am I? No. no, sorry. We even one of the things that we one of the one of our elected suggested was a, a utility pay assistance program, and so what that means is that uh, we took the utility payments and, and and late fees and all those types of things, and we identified people that are historic. We identified people that routinely get their water turned off, and we we looked at them and we said, you know what? Let's reach out to them and see what we can do to help them. So we de developed a program because. And utilities, we're, we have bonds, so we can't give away free service. We can't just you know, wipe away somebody's water, uh, water bill. But we can work on late fees and admin charges, because those are not covered in the, in the covenant, the bond covenant. So we said, let's see how we can reduce the bills, put them on a payment plan, extend that payment plan as much as we can, and then partner with a financial assistance um, uh, entity to help them get their finances in order. A lot of times, people uh, just, they, they, they've never done a budget. 
you know, they don't, have, they don't know how to manage their finances. So we've, we, we've started that program. Uh, so we really try to do as much outreach um, and training as, it, as, as, as acceptable because I can tell you that's because of that financial component, that, that financial uh, guidance assistance component, a lot of residents don't want to do it. You know, there, there's, a, there's a barrier in getting over that even. But it's available and, and, and it's something new that we're trying. Now we're going to try to get through yeah, a sure. lot, a lot more questions can in I a short you? amount of time. Yes, yes you can ask them. Uh, uh, so, well, I mean, it's my turn to pick. That's, yeah, it's okay. going to be your turn. What I was going to do, Mayor, is I was going to ask you. I mean, some of the things that he's. I know gone we've through, already covered. I mean, uh, we only have really like three questions left, basically, because I do want to pick a couple of them. That, I mean, the last, the last yeah, two, I have, the last I have two one. would be okay, right? Yeah, the, yeah, and I then I had the one on at the end. Been covered, isn't it? Choose whatever you want to choose, but just understand that we, you know, he has covered okay. an awful lot in, in your short time. We really appreciate it. We're going to try to get well, through. Well, I know we're getting to the end. I'm, I'm anxious to hear number 15. Go ahead. Is that all right? That's perfectly fine. Okay. Maybe we can end it with that if you want. Well, I want to know. Well, 14, 15. Like okay. three more questions. All right. Uh, why are you interested in this position? And is there anything you would like to add or clarify before we start to conclude? You're going to have a couple more questions, but. I just want to make sure we got that one in before our time right now. Um, I can tell you I'm nervous being here in, in, in yeah, front of you. Not to be because I'm not sure, but I've only worked for two places my entire professional career. Um, I don't believe in, I believe in loyalty. And through that, I have developed a lot of relationships um, with people, um, coworkers and, 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 and the like. Um, this... I, I'll share with you that I was asked to, to look at this, um, to look at this uh, opportunity. I wasn't aware of it, and I wasn't looking. I'm, I'm not, I, I wasn't looking at the time, um, but I was asked, and, and, and I did, and it, right away I became intrigued. Um, you're a smaller city, not in a bad way, but you're a smaller city, and you, you have a lot of growth that you're going through. Um, um, I'm interested because I think that my experience and what I've learned um, definitely could complement the, the direction that the city's going. Um, I'm very passionate about what I do. I love what I do. Um, uh, and I think I could bring that, uh, I think I could bring that to the city. Now I know why you don't sleep. I, you know, it's funny because um, people think that, well, in Miramar, we have a 410 work week. So we work Monday through we work Monday through Thursday. They have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. And people often joke, oh, it must be nice to have a four-day work week. That doesn't exist at, our, that, that doesn't exist at, the, at the upper levels in executive management of, of government. It, we're, always, we're always working. As I was in the parking garage here, even though I took the day off from work, I, I had a conversation with the police chief. I, had, I went back and forth with the community and economic development director you know, about things, the, the containers and things. We're always working, always. And you know, to tell you about my management style, I have to tell people that work with me, if you get an email from me at 1 o'clock in the morning, it doesn't mean that I want you to respond. It means that I'm, I, I got to get that off of my mind and get it into an email because if I don't, it'll drive me crazy. It, it, it's just that, that's the type of thing that we do. You know, I've been fortunate to, be, to have been married for 17 years to a beautiful wife. Um, she knew when she married me. Uh, we dated for four or five years, but she knew when she married me that I work. I'm a, uh, I, I, that's that's what I do. I, I love I love to work, and I, uh, uh, you know, I have a, a very strong work ethic. Um, we're always working, always. Uh, you know, as I came, like I said, I was here on Saturday. I was thinking I saw things in this city that I want to take back to, to no. Miramar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're you're doing you know you're doing a lot of good stuff. You 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 really are. Um, so. I have a follow-up question answer. with that. Who, who asked you to take a look into this opportunity? My Kathleen Woods Richardson, my, my city manager. Well, That's she's good. no longer the city manager, but a woman that I trust deeply, uh, worked with for many, many years. Um, um, Kathleen Woods Richardson. The former city she was, manager. She was the former a city, city manager. former city manager of Miramar. Miramar. I also worked directly for her when I was in Miami-Dade County. Um, she's in large part why I left the county and went to um, the city of Miramar. Um, and anytime somebody that mentors you, um, knows you, um, knows my family, knows the good things and the bad things, uh, you know, about me, about, you know, how, my personality, anytime somebody like that takes you and, and recommends you to look at something, you pause and, and, and you do it. And I'm glad I did. 
um, it was the only it, it was the only position I, I can tell you that she asked me to look at. So I, I am happy about that. How comfortable are you with making an unpopular decision that you feel is in the best interest of the city? Absolutely. I, I, I'm very comfortable. I mean, that's our role. That's, that's your manager's job to do that, and that's staff's job. Again, to present you with the facts and prevent, present you with our professional opinion on, on, on what we think you should do. Ultimately, it's your decision up here. You, you're going to be the one facing the voters uh, you know, when, when that time comes for whatever those decisions were. Not, not necessarily us, but it's important. For, it goes back to the communication and transparency. It's unfair to you if we don't give you all the information, though. And, and that's key. That, that's that's key to everything. Not everything that we not everything that we do as staff is going to be popular, especially with development. That's a, it's a great example. I I argue with developers all the time in, in <laughs> Miramar. Some developers have great access to the elected too, um, but that's the right thing to do. Whether it be you know whether it be asking a developer to you know mitigate uh, you know a traffic issue at an intersection that they don't feel they have to do, or or adding a bus stop to their you know, to their, um, you know, to their development. It could be any of those things. Look, they're, they're about making money. We, we understand that. But we also have to take care of the city, you know. And mm -hmm. if you don't capture, and I, and I use that, if you don't capture those things that you want in the, in the beginning, it's very hard to try to get it on the back end. It's all, virtually almost impossible. That's why it's important, again, to, to, to have staff um, come together and be part of everything that happens. If you want a development to happen, you want to make sure that any improvements to that road, whether it be aesthetics or, or, or expansions, try to capture it with, within that development plan um, because it's almost impossible to do it afterwards. What is your salary range? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was in a conference when, when Renee called me and uh, Ms. Nala called me about um, you know, this position and she was talking to me. And at one point she was like, Michael, what do you make? I said, I don't know, I, I'm making like 180 something thousand dollars. Uh, Renee, I make more money than I ever thought I was gonna make in my life. I didn't get into government to make this, is it great? Yes. I said, but I told Renee, I said, you know what, my father was, was very, had a very strong belief. Don't ever chase money. Chase what you love to do. And I've always held on to that. And in those, in those positions that I've told you about where I moved from one department to another, in almost every case, they weren't, um, they weren't for more money. It was an opportunity. I can tell you that um, I, I remember going from hourly to salary and, and, that, and, and losing probably $20,000 a year because I didn't get overtime anymore. So I don't have a number. I, and it, you know, Renee, you, you know, so Renee asked me. So you $50,000 you come in? No, I was going to say that. <laughs> Ren, Renee, said, you know, Renee said, well, what's the lowest? I said, well, I don't want to make $100,000 a year. I said, you know, that's a huge, that's a huge, that, that's a huge transition for my family. I said, but Renee, let's find out if they like me first. Let, okay. I'm not about. Look, I didn't. I, I've never approached anything about money. Um, I see it as an opportunity. I just ask a question on that. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, you made a, everything's good, and I like the fact that it's not always about money. But like you said, you can always get something done when you have um, when the employee wants you get anything done because the employee wants more money. Um, you know, whether it's 150000 or 175000 does that $25,000 makes a difference, and uh, it does make a difference in somebody's lifestyle. It's just that, um, you know, and I, do, and I do understand another part of it, too. You know, taking a job at Dania Beach is pretty interesting right now, and uh, it is a challenge, and you could put your uh, sign on this right now stating that, look what I've accomplished in the next four, six, or eight, or ten years with all the growth we've gone on here, and you could be a major part of that. So sometimes that is it more important than money. So I understand both sides of the coin. So, I mean, we, we you know, just want to make sure I understand that, uh, you know, because I, I notice your pay is, is up there, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not sure where we're going to end up with that uh, after thought, but it was just a, a question. Is that, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I'm, I'm open to discussing it. I'm not set on a number. Okay. Um, I, you know, again, my mom's Italian. So I can't make a decision without talking to my wife. Good woman. So, <laughs> but I gotta, I gotta talk to. My, I mean, obviously, I would have to talk to my family, uh, whatever that number is, and see how that impacts us. Okay. Um, my wife's a, a, an elementary school teacher in Miami-Dade County. She's been doing that for longer than we've been married. Um, so I, I, it's a discussion. We have, but I, I just wanted you to know that I'm not. I don't. I haven't shopped my resume. I'm not. These aren't things that I do. I, I was telling Renee. I feel a little bit guilty even being here, you know. But it's something I'm interested in. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm very interested in, in, in pursuing this. I'm just glad that you're, you know, you're, you're giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you. For me, that, that's, a huge, um, that's a huge honor. I mean, to be shortlisted and being able to talk to you is, is huge. Commissioner Bernamani? Yeah, I, I have to ask you this. You took a lot of roads uh, in your job in Miami, a lot of avenues and working unions and all. Did you ever by any chance run into any kind of ethical issues with yourself where, as you were involved in? I have to ask that. Because you went to so many roads, all right, and there's rocks in roads, and I, I just felt like I had to ask you that. Not, uh, no, not, when you say ethical, I think of, um, you know, contracting and, and, and rules and regular, no, nothing. No, I'm talking about. EOC? Uh, personally. So in my, well, I can share with you. Okay. Um, um, there was an EEOC complaint filed against, not me, but uh -huh. against Dade County. Okay. And it named multiple people in the complaint. I was one of those individuals. And the complaint stemmed from an individual who had worked with me, who I, 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 I was, it was, she was one of the department, division heads when I came into solid waste. She worked with me for many years, almost five years. Um, there was a lot of effort into um, um, counseling and coaching, um, trying to get that individual to work at the expectations that were, and it didn't happen. And I recommended, ultimately, I recommended that that person be demoted. Many months after that demotion, that individual filed this complaint against the county. Um, the county did its own review and didn't find issue um, with me. It's still open, though, with the EEOC. For how and long has this been? Four years, it's probably been, it's going to be four years. So there's a possibility I that you'd have to go back for depot, right? Well, I mean, yeah, anything. It's yes, there, right? Because it's yes, part of the routine of it. If, it. if it ever gets to that point, um, it could be. Okay. But again, um, it's been four years. I wanted that cleared because I already knew by okay. reading that okay. that existed. You were very honest in Fort Worth in, 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 uh, in answering me, and I appreciate that so much. Now, I do want to share with you, the state, there was, in the city of Miramar, there was a complaint that was lodged against uh, the city again, and again, it named multiple individuals, yeah, including myself, and that had to do with an administrative assistant, an administrative assistant that worked for the city manager and was demoted, and when she was demoted, um, she was placed with the assistant city manager. Um, when I became assistant city manager, um, I inherited that person, again, through counseling and everything. That individual, because of performance, was let go. That actually is being resolved this week. That yeah. actually is being heard this week. It was because so, of performance? Yeah, absolutely, performance. Okay. There's a, there, there's, um, how do I say this? There, there, there was some other unique issues okay, with that's that. That's what I'm asking about. But okay. that individual was let go because of performance, specifically because of performance. But Mr. Moore, isn't it, is it true, city attorney, isn't it true that they can't be uh, sued individually, that all suits go to the, against the city? Isn't that what, what how to straighten me out? Well, again, anybody can be named, the city and, and any employee could be named. We talked about um, what it means to be named a lawsuit. When a lawyer says that, that means the person is named as a defendant, saying so that the person suing is claiming the defendant as well as the city did something wrong. That didn't happen in the case we talked about earlier today, but in his case, he's not named in anything. He's named as a one of many people, apparently. Uh, when you're named, a, though, sir, it doesn't mean though. as like a result of? I That's don't, important. Yeah, I, in this case. Yes, yes, thank because you. Because the allegation is uh, is termination because of national origin. Right, or... Which... Oh, national origin. Yes. Or how about a, it could have just as well been well, terminated because my immediate supervisor harassed me. Um, so then that's how you would be then put into that kind of a EEO, what do you would call that, suit, right? Yes. yes. But it's the city that gets sued, not you as an individual, well, correct? The, I don't think there's anything preventing... Yes, there Me is. as an individual? I, I, I don't know enough about EEOC to tell you if an individual working in a city can be named in an EEOC complaint. But you haven't been named in it, right? 
it's, Wait, that goes it's, with the, it's the woman right? versus is the in there. woman versus Miramar. Correct. Yeah. As the employer. Okay. Correct. All right. Thanks. Last no, la you did good. last question. By the end of your first ninety days and first year, what would you um, expect to have accomplished as the new city manager? And our commissioner that is not here wants to wants to know. Um, are you w are you willing to move to Dania Beach? Well, to relocate. So on the first, um, let me answer the second part because that's. Um, it, it's definitely something I would consider. But again, I, I think that's a discussion. If you're interested in, in, in talking further with me, I think that's a discussion that goes hand in hand with the salary. Okay. Um, th those are, th th that's an important consideration. But um, definitely not opposed to it. Um, um, in the first 90 days, um, like I said, I'm very results oriented. There are things that I saw Saturday that in the first 90 days would be changed. Absolutely. Um, there, you, you, you have a lot of momentum and a lot of stuff, the rebranding that you've done. Um, your gateway. Do you like it? I, li I like it. Okay. Good. I like it. But, but. Your, <laughs> your, your, you know, your gateway signs to the city. You know, every place, you know. I agree. Every place possible that you needs to be. So I'm not trying, to, uh, and I feel bad. But no, I, don't but those feel are things bad. that you These have to. Those are things you have to change, years. and you have to. That momentum has to keep going forward, um, whether it be your letterhead, whether it be a logo in a in a in a, in a conference room next door. You know, every possible place that you can have that um, that rebranding, it has to happen. Mm -hmm. you, you have to do that. Yeah. Um, continuing, you know, continuing with um, your programs and expanding them. There, look. One of the things we didn't talk about, and I want to make sure I'm clear, um, a lot of times change takes money, and the commission has to be willing to spend that money. You said it louder. Um, a lot of you know a lot of things that I'm involved with in Miramar cost a lot of money, but they had they have huge dividends, you know, in return. So yes, you're a smaller city, but you're a growing city. But we have to and you have to invest with. In the facilities you have, uh, you know your initiatives that you have, we have to do that, and that's smart budgeting. That, uh, that's finance. Um, there's, we have to be very creative. I don't believe in just adding FTEs unless it's absolutely. I'm sorry. I don't believe in adding positions to your bottom line unless it's absolutely necessary. But if we're not maintaining our parks or if we're not maintaining our beach because we don't have enough people, then that's something that we have to talk about and discuss. And if we can't move people move as attrition, as people retire and take positions and move them around, you know, to try to accomplish that, then we have to come before you and ask for those, you know, ask for those people. Okay. But if we're going to have a world, if we're going to have a beat, so one of the things that, you know, I, again, I grew up here. I used to drive through Dania Beach. Or if I stopped, it was to go to the pier, you know, go to the beach. Mm -hmm. But so one of the things I see about the city is not a pass-through. It needs to be a destination. <laughs> you have my words. I probably did. <laughs> okay. You probably have to, they, you know, you, you, that needs to be that. You know, you, you, and you're doing it. You have the beautiful hotels that are going up. Um, you, you know, some of the developments here, you know, that are happening. I drove by the casino. First time I'd seen the casino. You, you know, I, I live here. I work. I probably go to the beach once or twice a year because I'm always working. You know, it, it's just, it, it's just not, so, there's not a luxury of a lot of, of no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just telling you, we, yes, we really have to wrap it up. Okay, two more. One quick thing. Yeah, yeah. Commissioner Brandon, are you finished with your question? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Just a quick question. You know, when you start talking about the employees that we could use or the, or the things that we need in the city, one of the things I've always asked is, you know, knowing that we have, and you see what's going on, and I see your mind working, okay, and you see all the new revenue that's going to be coming into the city, how long are you going to wait to... The, get this stuff done. How long would you wait to get this stuff done? Would you find a way, if we didn't have that money in our general revenue funds to figure out a way to do it, that we could pay for it later and get it done now, like charge it? Well, th there's definitely a lot of, there. yes, there's a lot, lot of, there's a lot of ways to be creative. One yeah. of the things that I don't like uh, and wouldn't like to make routine is budget amendments. You should set a budget for your city and the city, city staff should execute that budget. If there was a budget amendment, it should only be one, you know, maybe a mid-year adjustment. But even that, um, that's not our goal. That's not my goal. That's not the, the that's individuals. Not, that's that what I, I meant, though. Well, what, 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 what I'm getting at is that a lot of times we look at the budget and we think that's all the money we have. 
But as part of these new developments that come in, yes, we should be looking at ways to set something aside or even no, borrowing I'm money. Getting, I'm talking about getting the money, borrowing, that, borrowing it somewhere the so we can, yeah. do it, so we can get know, these things done. I, I do you agree. Know, you normally you don't borrow money if you can't pay it back, but you see Correct. everything that's coming in. So I do agree, but there, there has to be a significant discussion. Let me tell you why. In Miramar, we have a $13 million annual debt payment that's against our ad valorem tax, more than any other city in Broward County any other city in Broward County. Why? Because over the years, they borrowed money to, to, to develop city, city center, yeah. Anson. Look we have a beautiful, look. we have a bunch of beautiful you know, yeah. facilities. Yeah, beautiful, but, but we're paying the price right now. Yeah, but you're so there has to be income coming in. Well, we're, we're, it, it's coming slowly. Mm -hmm. It's coming in, but it's a challenge because remember too, that $13 million is there for you know, 20, 30 years. So it's not that it's not that it's the wrong year. way, but I just think yes. we have to have a discussion about it. <laughs> okay, That's thank awkward. thank we thank you so much. We've gone way well love, love, love of our time, but it's our fault. It's not Sorry, your fault. It's our fault. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you very we much. Appreciate you. Okay, thank you.